Have you ever done an unpaid internship? Welcome back to Be Europe, the podcast that explores the pressing issues affecting the youth of Europe. I'm your host, Stefanos, and today we have a very special episode for you. We'll be delving into a topic that has been generating a lot of debate recently, unpaid internships. I'm delighted to introduce our guest for today, Claudia Pinto, a policy officer on social and economic inclusion at the European Youth Forum. Welcome, Claudia. Hello, Stefanos. Thank you for uh, inviting us, first of all, and for this initiative. Uh, my name is Claudia. I'm a policy officer for social and economic inclusion at the European Youth Forum. So maybe for those who are not so familiar, the European Youth Forum is the largest platform of youth organizations in Europe. Uh, we represent over 100 youth organizations towards international institutions. So not only European Union, but also Council of Europe, for example, or United Nations. So yeah, we're a membership based organization. As a policy officer for social and economic inclusion, a big part of my time is spent on our unpaid internships um, campaign and yeah, transitions from education to the labor market uh, overall. That's great. So I imagined uh, you should have been very busy during the campaign of the, of the uh, uh, unpaid internships. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Uh, we actually just closed it uh, last month, but throughout 2022 and the first half of 2023, it was really hectic, but good fun, you know? <laughs> so yes, I was following following the, the campaign on social media and it was, you know, so many, so many things going on and so on. But yeah, I will let you explain, explain all that. Now I'm, I'm really wondering how did you come up with uh, with the with this campaign to ban unpaid internships? Yeah, like how this all started. I suppose the topic of internships or just quality employment conditions overall um, has always been a priority for the Youth Forum. So we already published a quality charter on internships already in 2011, so more than 10 years ago. Uh, and then in 2017, the European Youth Forum lodged a collective complaint against Belgium towards the European Committee of Social Rights, which is a body of the Council of Europe. And it was basically on the grounds that Belgium was allowing the exploitation of young people in the labor market through unpaid internships. The outcome of this complaint was published in the beginning of 2022, and it was basically... Uh, largely citing or giving reason to this claim that indeed Belgium was not protecting the, the rights of interns in the labor market. I suppose the outcome of this collective complaint aligned with the European Year of Youth, which was 2022, as we all know, and as well um, the European Commission started reviewing the a quality framework for traineeships also in 2022. So this quality framework for traineeships is a council recommendation from 2014, basically outlining principles of what a quality internship looks, a traineeship looks like in Europe. Because this is a council recommendation, this is not a binding instrument, so it's up to the member states whether they want to implement it or not. And most importantly, it leaves out principles on remuneration and access to social security protection. And we know from research how remuneration is the key quality criteria of a traineeship. So it basically leaves out the most important principle and its potential is just cut short overall. So I suppose these like three different elements, you know, like the review of this quality framework, the collective complaint and the European Year of Youth kind of sent us on this path of advocating for a directive which uh, guarantees um, yeah, access to remuneration for interns in the labor market. No, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty pretty interesting. So you started launching a complaint here in in Belgium, and this you know led to 
uh, going uh, towards the European Union and the European Parliament. He started locally and then moved into more um, European European level, let's say. Uh, I suppose there are just like three different processes that happened to collide all at the same time. I mean, the reason why they chose Belgium at the time in 2017 was because of a Eurobarometer survey that was uh, published in already like in 2013. And the majority of people, the, of those who were surveyed, said that they were doing an unpaid internship in Belgium. I suppose that's why uh, Belgium was the selected country. Was um, Belgium the Belgium the only one, or were there more uh, countries in the in the list? If, if you know, um, yeah, there are several. It's quite an interesting topic because the rights of interns can vary greatly among member states, and that's why we also demand a directive because it's just not fair. For example, in the beginning of 2022 as well, the Youth Forum published a report mapping different internship policies across the member states. So you can see how different it is. For example, in countries like France, internships outside of education are not even possible. They're not legal. Other countries like Germany, it's legal to be unpaid if they are up to like three months, three or four, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, you can see how different the policies can be across the member states, but definitely unpaid internships is a possibility in other in countries other than Belgium. Let's uh, go a bit into, into the campaign. Could you tell us what were the goals of the of your campaign? Like I said, it was hectic, but good fun. Also because we got to engage with a lot of young people. We could see like this really mobilizing moment across Europe that, yeah, almost like sparked the debate at national level as well. Our main tool of our campaign was our petition calling for a directive which ensures access to remuneration and social security protection. We just closed it last month. We had the opportunity to hand it to Commissioner Schmidt and we managed to collect uh, about 8,400 signatures, which is quite uh, significant. So yeah, I would say that's like our main, our main tool, our, yeah, our main demand. And then throughout the year, we, we had the opportunity to engage with a lot of young people as well, because we, we saw how this is a topic that really concerns young people across Europe. We launched different reports. We last year we did live talks to explore um, the rights of young people in the labor market. We also organized the film screening. We published our report in the beginning of this year on the hidden costs of unpaid internships. And most recently, we launched an ambassadors program because we also wanted young people to feel ownership uh, of this campaign and be directly involved in it and just advocate themselves at local and national level to, to ban unpaid internships. Yeah, it's been really rewarding to just connect with so many young people across Europe. And uh, what were some of the challenges faced during this uh, hectic, as you call it, uh, time? That's a really good question. I mean, in hindsight now, you only think of the good memories, you know? <laughs> I suppose it can be a bit disheartening just to see how bad the, the statistics are, especially when we saw, did our report on the hidden costs of unpaid internships and got to see that those coming from a marginalized background are eight times less likely to access this type of work placements in comparison with those coming from a, a higher socioeconomic background. So that's like, you know, that's why we need to act. Yeah, maybe it feels a bit, you know, strange to see all those statistics, but I believe, you know, at the same time, they also give uh, you fuel to continue with the campaign. Yeah, indeed. It's like it, it also gives you the spirit to continue and to push forward and, and to, to fight. Yeah, indeed, to fight for a change. Can you also tell us about the process of building 
public awareness during the campaign? How did you manage this? Now that we do the campaign, and this was the first campaign that I ever worked with, so I can say that do not underestimate the time that it takes to plan <laughs> uh, and just to kickstart. This campaign was a true collaboration between different teams across the youth forum, so it's not just about policy but also like comms our communications team or even like the membership team as well so uh, it was good to like collaborate with the different teams and i think that's how had like a strong communications angle for example so when you launched the campaign I imagine you also discussed with, I don't know, maybe the European Parliament or the European Commission as well. So I'm wondering, um, how did they first react to this? The European Parliament has always been an ally on this. So, so in February of 2022, they adopted a resolution on empowering young people. And one of the recommendations was indeed to ban unpaid internships. And then in the end of 2022, they started the process of the own initiative report on quality traineeships in Europe, which was uh, recently adopted uh, in June. And once again, it reiterates the same calls uh, for a directive which bans unpaid internships. And from the European Commission side, Commissioner Schmidt has um, been publicly in su uh, support of our campaign. And also uh, the previous commissioner, uh, Maria Gabriel, uh, in the end of 2022, uh, she also said that, you know, banning unpaid internships and the EU youth test should be the legacy of the European Year of Youth. And if we want to go even further, not further, but like give another example, banning unpaid internships, it's also rec a recommendation from the Conference uh, on the Future of Europe. So yeah, there's like different support across the, the board, across the spectrum. So, so there is some willingness uh, from, from the politicians to actually, actually do, do something about it. Yeah. I remember, you know, as well, um, a few years ago, I did an internship in Germany. And I mean, it, it was paid, it was paid internship, but, uh, you know, the, the allowance they gave us, you couldn't even pay the rent uh, with that. So I, I'm thinking um, about the relationship between paid internship or to cover the cost of living because some internships, they are paid, but they are very poorly paid. So I know as the Youth Forum, you made the, the report on paid internships in Europe. So I want to ask you, um, how much does it cost for a young person to do, to do an internship in, in Europe? Yeah, well, I can tell you that it costs a thousand euros, a bit over a thousand euros, actually. But the, um, the catch here is that this is an EU average. So, of course, there are countries where it costs even more. For example, Luxembourg, I think it tops the list at 800,000 um, euros. That's the thing that we can see with unpaid internships is that you actually have to pay to work because and because yeah you have to yeah. cover your bills but there's another aspect of loss here which is the loss of potential income because you could be actually like doing some other job that was paid uh, or not some other job but you know you're like losing the potential of earning an income so yeah i suppose that's like you know, underpaid, low quality traineeships, you know, sometimes people get as, as little as a transport allowance. At the youth forum, yeah, we believe that the, the right amount of pay for internships should be minimum wage. Uh, because that's what we as a society collectively agree, that it's the minimum that a person should earn when they are working, like minimum wage or the collective bargaining agreement in place, depending on, um, yeah, on, on the member states. There was a recent uh, Eurobarometer from this spring already saying that I think a bit over a half of the internships received financial compensation. But then you're left thinking like, what does this mean? Because this financial compensation cannot be enough to cover the bills. That's why at, at the European Youth Forum, we believe that 
yeah, it should be the the minimum wage or the collective bargaining agreement in place. And yeah, it costs a thousand euros to to work for free. It makes you think. Yeah, and it's 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 actually it's a lot of money. Like you said, in some countries, the the number is even is even higher. Uh, yeah, there there's even a cumulative effect to this loss because if you're doing an internship for over a month, then it's gonna like accumulate this loss. Like imagine a six month internship, which is kind of the standard. You're gonna lose like six thousand euros, and if you do more than one unpaid internship, the loss can go up to twelve thousand. Yeah, there's like this piling up, um, or like snowball even effect. Yes, yes, indeed. And I think we live in a time that it's almost mandatory for someone to do internship, right? Because at the time of my parents, internships were not a thing. Now to, to get a proper job, most probably you will need to do like maybe maybe even two or three internships, you know, to get the experience. So if all of these internships, they are unpaid, it means, yeah, you're paying a lot of money to get this, this experience. Yeah, yeah, indeed. We can see how internships boomed after the the financial crisis. So it's it's really becoming a lot of like a big problem for a lot of of young people. And indeed, like most young people do two, three, four internships, and that's just like baffling if I can if I can use this word because the concept of an internship is to support the transition from education to the labor market so why would somebody need like three or four or five internships to set the foot in the labor market it doesn't make much sense indeed indeed yeah but also going back in the report on the non-paid internships that the youth forum did I've come across a terminology named uh, ramen noodles only budget and I was very curious because I like ramen noodles can you explain us this uh, what this uh, terminology means ramen noodles only budget basically means the bare minimum that a person needs to survive so when we talk about this a thousand euros that costs to work for free like we mentioned previously these a thousand euros are literally the bare minimum so they account for like food rent transport medical bills um you know categories like this and i suppose the the ramen noodles are just uh illustrative of i don't want to say like cheap food that you get from the supermarket but like once again you know the the bare minimum that you need Moving forward, I will try to be, you know, for the sake of the discussion, a bit the, the devil's advocate here. I've read, you know, across across the internet that some people they argue that the ban on unpaid internships might lead to some companies, you know, eliminating the this post, which potentially could reduce the chances of new graduates to kickstart their career. Um, I want to ask if this is something that you consider during your campaign or if this is something that is, uh, you know, worrying you as, as a youth forum? Yeah, so I suppose we also have to think about, like, then what is the alternative? Do we keep not paying people? Do we want as a society to keep young people in a precarious, in like in pre precarious employment contracts? There is a lot of like uh, funding opportunities that are out there. So I don't think not paying people is an excuse. There's like, even for example, the Youth Guarantee, which is funded through the European Social Fund Plus. Uh, one of the recommendations from the Youth Forum is precisely not having unpaid internships under the Youth Guarantee. The president of the European Commission also last year, in the last, uh, like last year's State of the European Union speech, mentioned like an SMEs package. I mean, there's so much uh, funding uh, available. I don't think not paying people can be uh, an excuse. Yes, uh, there is. There is also the Erasmus uh, Plus uh, traineeships as well that can pay you. They apply this, this funding, and you get funding by the, the Erasmus Plus. I want 
want also to take the opportunity because now the Blue Book three initiatives for the European Commission, the applications, they are open until the end of August. And this is a paid three initiative that is offered by the European Commission. I want to ask you, like, you know, is this kind of three initiative what you want to, to achieve in the end to have, you know, uh, around around Europe? Like, is it is it well compensated? Is it, uh, um, yep. I think the the Blue Book traineeship, like in comparison with other traineeships, it's not like a bad one. But if we look at the overall context, like it's still under minimum wage. And according to our study, if I'm not mistaken, it's either in line or just a bit under of the Belgium's, you know, average to 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 work for free. So there's still room for improvement for sure. So, so it's a, it's a, it's a good thing that it's it's paid, but it can be it could it could be better uh, the, the yeah. salary. and I think it also makes you reflect like if this is already a like a good one that it's out there, then what <laughs> what does it mean for the others? <laughs> yeah, it did, it did, it did. Let's move a bit into the vote of the European Parliament uh, to to ban the unpaid uh, internships uh, a few a few months ago, and uh, like from your perspective, uh, running this campaign, how how did it feel uh, when the European Parliament voted in favor of the of this uh, of this uh, report? On a personal side, I think I, I was even a bit numb, if I may say. Like, I think I only realized the significance of it a few days after when I was like, wow, <laughs> well done. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, uh, even though it's just a, a no, it's just, I mean, it's a non initiative report. Um, it, it, yeah, it was a really good uh, feeling across the the team to to see a European institution once again uh, vouching for young people and uh, protecting uh, their rights in the labor market. So yeah, it was definitely um, you know a celebration uh, uh, in the office. Um, and yeah, and now we. There's like very clear, um, explicit calls in that report that was approved. So now we are waiting for the European Commission to, to yeah, propose um, their initiative to to put forward their initiative on the table. Do you think that uh, is there something that it should not have been in the report, or maybe it's it's missing from the report that the the European Parliament voted on? Looking at the um, at the call, I mean, it's it's exactly in line with what young people have been demanding. So, I mean, yeah, we're quite happy with it because it, it explicitly it explicitly calls for a directive which ensures remuneration to interns in line with the minimum wage. It's exactly what young people need. You mentioned that now is uh, we're waiting for the European commission to somehow you know come up with a plan for this can you explain us what are the the next steps so the the european parliament has voted for this report and uh, now what are we waiting so the european parliament basically asked the Euro- like called the european commission to put forward the proposal on the table and also it was already part of the european commission's work program for 2023 uh, to adopt an initiative on on this topic so the consultations with the social partners have started already yeah and they are ongoing so <laughs> we will see when we have the the final proposal so there aren't any specific timeline or deadlines well it's gonna be in 2023 so we are waiting for it <laughs> slowly slowly we are coming to to the end of this episode and i want to ask you now that the campaign on the unpaid uh, internship is, is finished are there any similar campaigns or causes um, that uh, the european youth forum plans to to pursue in the in the future 
we have our Vote at 16 campaign as well, especially in line, I mean, ahead of the European elections. So yeah, I invite everyone to uh, keep uh, following us and, and keep following our work. Yeah, and to just support us and support young people across Europe. Great, perfect. And do you have any advice for you know, either youth-led organizations or individuals uh, who want to, you know, initiate uh, social change? I think, honestly, just be kind to yourselves because change takes time and you encounter bumps along the road and it's kind of like two steps forward, one step back. So, yeah, just be kind to yourselves and have fun along the way. And don't okay. underestimate the time it takes to plan. <laughs> Yes, yes. I also learned uh, recently here at the Eurodesk that uh, it takes uh, a lot, a lot of time to plan a campaign because we're also planning the the campaign for the EU elections uh, that yeah. will, will be launched soon. And I agree to that. I agree. Is there anything else that you would like, you know, to add or highlight about the campaign on uh, banning the unpaid internship that uh, that we haven't mentioned? Yeah, I mean, maybe just saying that. This was really a team effort. Um, it was several people uh, working uh, for this. It's like, I don't know, like shared baby almost. And just like thanking everyone who uh, supported the Youth Forum throughout this campaign, but also on, on other topics and uh, supports our work and uh, follows us and, and uh, yeah, engages with us. Great. And uh, last question, uh, where can our listeners find uh, more information about the, you know, the European Youth Forum and participate in its uh, activities? So uh, we have our website and we are on different social media channels. So like TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. So you can find us there and you can also subscribe to our newsletter. So you, you, so we are also be in your own mailbox. <laughs> Great. So we have reached the end of our discussion. Thank you very much, uh, Claudia, for you know sharing your insights with us about the unpaid internship. A very, very important topic, uh, I will say, in, in Europe today. And it was very inspiring to you know hear from you about the campaign, about how much you you believe in this uh, cause, and we really. We really appreciate, you know, your commitment of you of the Youth Forum in helping helping young people. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the kind words and thank you for inviting us.